Hello and welcome to my channel today. This is a variety channel that covers a number of topics and today we're going to be talking about an issue in cats. We are revisiting a video that I did last year about watching your cat pee and idiopathic cystitis in felines. Today I'm going to share the treatment one of my vets found in maintaining and treating my cat Baxter's idiopathic cystitis and I'm going to share with you a really low cost option to that medication in addition to that. But first let's talk about idiopathic cystitis real quick in case you didn't see that other video. Feline idiopathic cystitis is a condition in a cat's bladder that has to do with an imbalance of pH in their urine. It's a common bladder condition in cats, especially male cats, but it does impact female cats. It's also known as feline lower urinary tract disease, and in some cases, Pandora's disease. Feline idiopathic cystitis is a disease of exclusion, so most often, if you've had your pet in for issues that have symptoms like that, they will exclude all other health conditions before they land on a diagnosis of feline idiopathic cystitis. Now, there's not a lot of information about what causes it other than a, a imbalance of pH in the urine and the thing that can trigger it is sometimes environmental stressors, new cats, new houses, things like that. My vet and I determined that Baxter's was caused by there being a lot of different cats around this last year. Uh, when he gets stressed out with one of when one of his siblings passes away, he usually was having um, flare-ups. And um, one of the reasons I know that this medication is working better is because in the last year I have went from having four cats to 11 cats. Now not all of them are inside out here as mentioned in some other videos. I have some strays who I'm trying to socialize, trap, neuter, and <clears throat> I'm probably gonna be releasing them in the spring after I build an outdoor house for them that they can use and then I can trap them again in the winter. Mostly because this town uh, is small and is overrun with cats and it's impossible to rehome cats and I cannot keep five cats trapped in my studio for the rest of their lives. So I am going to release them. There's one cat left that needs to be taken in for a spay and then all five will have been trapped, neutered, and then I'll have to release them. Though there are two that have been vying for a position in the house. Now some of the things that can happen with idiopathic cystitis is a urinary tract infection and bladder stones or bladder crystals. When those conditions have no identifiable causes, like I said, then it's feline idiopathic cystitis. First, I wanna say I am not a vet. I'm just a woman with a lot of cats who asks a lot of questions and does a lot of research and follows up with my vets because I want to give my cats the best health outcomes possible. So any information I give you here, please feel free to take it to your vet and follow up with them. I do have some resources, one in specific that I'll mark in the description and then also on my website where I have uh, a number of resources for the videos that I use resources for. The medicine that my vet recommended is called ammonium chloride. And when I first started using it, it had to be compounded at a human pharmacy in little tiny gelatin capsules that I would sprinkle over Baxter's food the tiniest, tiniest amount. And one month supply cost $90. And obviously $90 is a lot for anybody. And so I did as much research as I could to figure out how to reduce the cost of that medicine. And then once I found that, I took that idea to my vet, who then authorized me to do what I'm about to say as long as I was getting his urine tested regularly, which was required anyway. So ammonium chloride effectively reduces the pH of the urine, which is the goal to get the symptoms of uh, feline idiopathic cystitis under control. Ammonium chloride is something that they used to use and the vet who prescribed it is the old, older vet at my vet clinic. And that is why none of the younger vets had known about it. And it is 
still used in large animals. So it's used in beef and dairy cows. It's used in sheep and goats. And so you can get it from a veterinary clinic or a veterinary source online. I got mine at Amazon, but going forward, I will probably get it somewhere else if I ever make it through the whole container because you can get a two and a half pound container. I got mine at Amazon for $32, but if you are no longer using Amazon or you'd like to use a different uh, source, you can go to valleyvet.com where I saw it yesterday for $19.99 for the same size of a, of a container. Hey, you guys, stop it. Come on. Hey, no, you're being naughty. Get off my paintings, Tucker. Come here, come here. What are you doing? Ugh. Cat intermission. Two of the cats that want to go indoors, this is Sylvie and the other one is the gray cat, Tucker. And they get out of cage privileges and today is one of their out of cage privilege days. And um, they're causing a ruckus. Aren't you, Sylvie? Aren't you? Hi. Okay, yeah. Okay, you're sitting on my notes, though. You're sitting on my notes, though. Yeah. I forgot what I was talking about. So, large containers of ammonium chloride. You're going to get a big container, and it's going to be probably the rest you're going to need for your cat's life. It only requires, like, the smallest, tiniest little amount. And... <clears throat> I suggest, because it's important how you store it, that you find a smaller container and, and put it in there and then tighten up the container and put it in the back of your fridge. You have to be careful how you store it. You have to store it in a tight, airtight, in a dark, airtight container where it's not too hot and not too cold. You should avoid freezing this product. While you're using this medication, it is important to note that you will still require some monitoring, especially in the first year of using it so that your vet can determine whether or not it's actually working. I just got the all clear from my vet so I don't have to keep bringing Baxter in every three months for urinary pH checks. Now you have to be careful because you don't want to use too much and this is why you want to talk to your vet and you want to make sure that you have the right uh, way to measure it and the right, uh, like a scale. And like I said, monitoring is important. And this is also a human medication. So if you take this medication, there are other things that you should be watching out for too. <laughs> it can cause pallor and sweating. It can cause irregular breathing and irregular heart rate and can cause convulsions and coma. So it's very, very important that you know how much you should be administering. And it's not very much. It's just the smallest amount of sprinkles. I'm gonna go through a really quick list Hey, get off the TV. I'm gonna go through a really quick list of uh, warnings and things that you should watch out for, uh, both administering this, because it can get in the air, but also like if your cat has a number of different diseases and issues, these are ones that mean that you should not be administering this medication to them. Uh, issues include liver disease or impaired liver or kidney function as the liver metabolizes the ammonium chloride and the kidney excretes the metabolites. Uremia, which is high levels of urea in the blood. If there's problems with severe vomiting, urate urinary stones, respiratory acidosis, pulmonary insufficiency, and that's in humans, uh, cardiac edema, which is also an issue in humans. Now, one of the things I did learn from this is that if you use too much of it or if it's not appropriate, it can cause the increase of a different kind of stone called a calcium oxalate urinary stone, which is one of the stones they were trying to determine whether or not Baxter had before he went on the medication because uh, there are two different kinds of stones and they mean two different kinds of things that could be wrong with your cat. And so then when you're opening it and stuff, it does have warnings about using this product. It should be used with caution in patients with lung and breathing problems or with fluid retention due to heart disease. It should be used with caution in pregnant or lactating animals. And I'm going to guess that that's also uh, if you're a pregnant or lactating human. And it says that the oral formulation 
is not as effective in kittens. Now this is a disease that is more common in middle-aged cats. So after you use this medication for a while and you, the stabilization has been determined, then you still need to bring your cat in and have his urine test or her urine tested at least once a year or at your doctor's um, direction. <laughs> you make it very hard to concentrate. Yes, you do. You're such a sweetie pie. So I think that's it. Um, I was really excited. I'm hoping this spreads everywhere because I know idiopathic cystitis in cats. I've read the reddits uh, back when I was dealing it with, with Baxter in the first place. And it's very, very scary for people who love their pets and their cats. Hi. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Hi. What's gonna go on? What's gonna go on? Hmm? Yeah. If you have any questions or I didn't say something I should and you know about this medicine, please leave it in the comments section below because I have not been able to find a lot of information about this medication and so I'm hoping that uh, this can be a really good resource for people who are dealing with this in their pets. Thank you for stopping by my video today and as always, have a wonderful day. Oh, you're so cute, aren't you? You just love me so much, don't you? You want to go see the cats? Oh. oh, who's a cutie? Who's a cutie? You want to be a house cat, don't you? Yes, you do. You want to be a house cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Hmm, who's a good boy? Let's go take a look at the other cats. I only have one left that needs to be spayed, and that's Mushi, the little girl. Mama was the first one, and then all three boys went in on the same day. I was able to find a service in a town nearby that has low cost services for strays in barn cats, and they take people from out of town. So I was actually able to get them spayed and have their first, um, their first uh, vaccine and I think also I had them tested to make sure that it didn't have anything like feline leukemia and stuff like that. And it was only $125. And um, I got my kitten in the house spayed at my actual vet and, and that was about $700. So it's a significant savings if you can find a, um, a low cost veterinary service that in your area that deals with uh, strays. All right, Sylvie, should we go see the other ones? Should we show them the other kitties? Hmm? Should we show them the other kitties? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a stray cat. He's been coming around for two years. It was only like the last six months that he'd let me touch him. He would sit in my studio and watch me paint last summer, but he would never let me touch him. And now he's in love with me. Yes, aren't you? Yes, aren't you? Mm. Yes. Oh, hi. Let's, let's go show them the other kitties. Hi. Yes, you are a cutie. There's Tucker who gets outdoor privileges, outside the cage privileges, don't you cutie pie. And this is Haley. Haley would like a home. He's semi-feral, he's a sweetheart. These are my two ladies. It's Mama and Mushi. Mama's a little spicy and Mushi's a lot spicy. This guy's been getting more and more friendly. I get in the cage with him and pet them and stuff. And in a couple weeks, they will be leaving this space because I'll be building them an outdoor facility so that they can get some fresh air because I can tell that they know that spring is here and they're getting all sorts of antsy. So that's it. That's my five outdoor cats. I've got six inside now. If you don't follow me on Blue Sky, this is my sixth cat. His name is Toby. I got him from a tractor shop. He was real rough when I found him. I'd been seeing him for a year and a half or two, and I convinced them to let me take him home to give him like a better end of life experience because he is old and he needed a shave. <laughs> anyway, thanks for looking at my cats with me. I'll talk to you later.